160203, Cape Cod. Scene 1. Captain Bartholomew Goswell was probably a kinsman of the Gosnolds of Ipswich and Otley. To mark the fact of Gosnolds' connection with Suffolk and Ipswich, we also show scenes of Tudor houses. There is a monument to Gosnold on Cuttyhunk Island in Maine. Pendennis Castle at Falmouth was built by Henry VIII and can be seen today. On the left is a musketeer. On the right is a pikeman with his 18-foot-long pike. To the right of the musketeer is a flask for gunpowder. The bottom scene shows Godnold bidding farewell to his wife at Falmouth. Waiting with one of his sea chests is one of his seamen. Through the open window, his ship Concord is seen at anchor. A servant watches. On the table in the foreground is a holder for a taper. Scene 2. The Indians watch the English from the Concord fishing for cod. The main illustration shows Gosnold celebrating his naming of the cape while a cook prepares the fish for a meal. Scene 3. After doubling Cape Cod and sailing to the south, Gosnold landed on the small island about six miles from Gay Head. He called it Martha's Vineyard. The next day he landed on the larger island. After exploring it and finding it so large, well wooded and with such luxuriant grapevines, many beautiful lakes and springs of the purest water, he transferred the name and called it Martha's Vineyard in honour of his mother, whose name was Martha. The small island that he visited beforehand he named No Man's Land. The general area is today known as Maine. Soon afterwards, Gosnold explored the group of islands to the northwest of the vineyard, naming them Elizabeth Islands, in honour of Queen Elizabeth, who was still reigning. On May the 28th, Gosnold founded a colony on Cuttyhunk Island. Bottom drawing shows the construction of the first fort and house in New England on Cuttyhunk Island. Gosnell discusses the plans with one of the soldiers in the company. The stream is symbolic of the fresh, clear water he found on the island. Scene 4. The colonists have discovered great quantities of sassafras on the island and an abundance of cedar wood, white cedar. Accordingly, Gosnell loaded a large cargo of sassafras root and bark and cedar logs on board the Concord. The sassafras root was then in great demand in England as a popular medicine and cure It's still sold today in herbalist shops in bark form or as an oil. The would-be colonists, having finished this task, became afraid of the Indians and decided to return to England with Gosnold. Meanwhile, back in England in early spring, Queen Elizabeth died, and her funeral took place at Westminster on April the 28th. Scene 5. Gosnold brought back the Concord to England in 1602 and brought his ship in to Exmouth in Devon on July the 23rd. He counted on getting a large price for his cargo of sassafras and cedar, but Walter Raleigh arrived and pointed out to him that he, Gosnold, had trespassed on his land in America, which was from north latitude 34 to 45. So Raleigh seized the whole cargo to the gust of all who those who had ventured their lives on the voyage. However, the expedition was not a failure. It showed those who followed later that the more direct route to America that aroused great interest in more attempts at colonisation. The Mayflower followed Gosnold's route 18 years later. Raleigh's own luck also ran out at court. James I was the new monarch and hated Raleigh. Soon charges of high treason were brought against Raleigh, where, on November the 17th, his trial began presiding judge was Sir John Popham, Lord Chief Justice, and aided, among others, by Sir John Heal. Raleigh was found guilty and imprisoned. His death sentence was carried out years later, in 1618, when he was beheaded 
at the Tower of London. This panel was stitched by the Plymouth New World Tapestry Team, led by Joyce Leonard. The first stitch was made on Thursday the 27th of October 1988 by Philip Reed, the parish secretary of St Andrew's Church in Plymouth. It took place in the Abbey Hall, which adjoined the church. The last stitches were made on July the 10th, 1992, in the Priston House by Joyce Leonard and the team. Of all the shields of the coats of arms I've shown here, I would say that of Captain William Parker is of particular interest. Captain Parker was a privateer, or licensed pirate, who brought back gold to Plymouth and became its mayor. Luckily for all of us, his house still remains, which we can visit and enjoy in St Andrew Street. There you'll find a modern copy of the charter that set up the Plymouth Adventurers Company that developed North America, which he promoted. Turning to the herbs that I've put on this panel, Hedge Mustard has a most odd remedy according to the famous old herbalist Gerard. Gerard's recommendation was that it helpeth those who have had their hair pulled off. It taketh away the blue and black marks that come with bruising. It makes it sound as though having one's hair pulled out was a frequent occurrence in his day. Quite a bold statement, I feel. 